Humanities. This is Abby Lodmer here with Humanitarian Chronicles, here with an amazing, incredible, inspirational mother and activist and community leader, June Laux, a passionate, driven, positive, eco and love promoting angel in the first degree, helping people to heal themselves and the planet through connecting deeper to themselves and their food and their families and their communities. I am so honored to have you here today, June, author, mother, um, author of a Malibu Moms Manifesto on fresh whole foods. She makes eating healthy look enjoyable and doable, and I'm just so happy to have you here today, June, on Humanitarian Chronicles. Thank you so much for being here. Wow. Thanks for having me, Abby. That was an amazing introduction. Oh my God. We can stop the video right there. Now you know who June is. Go look her up. Contact her. No, you're, you're an amazing person and the introduction could have taken up the entire video, but I will let you talk about who you are. I am so privileged to know June. My mom actually was June's, is June's biggest fan. When June was running for city council to make Malibu greener, more environmentally friendly, healthier, um, a less toxic, more earth loving, sustainable place to live, which is close to my heart because I'm from Malibu. My parents still live there. I grew up there. It's, it's such a beautiful place and we do need to sustain her, to sustain her majesty and her beauty and it, it is an inside job and June through her public persona talks all about this um, leads workshops in her house and I am just so honored to know you personally to have met some of your four incredible vibrant loving daughters and you're just walking the walk so I just I have so many questions for you but I want to start with what what was your journey to get to be the person you are how did you come to all these realizations about healthy inside for healthy outside? All that jazz. Great question. Okay, so to start off with my journey, it, I, I have to tell you up front that it was really hard. Yeah. And I think whenever we face these crises, these health challenges, and it looks like we're going to die, that's the opportunity. And for me, that was the opportunity um, for me, it was migraines, and they were debilitating. They got um, super intense. Um, I was on the floor, nauseous, throwing up. Um, 43 days out of a six-month period, I was completely debilitated, mm -hmm. and I had four young daughters. And um, I just had this one migraine where I was like, I, I wasn't going to make it. And so that was where I kind of hit the wall and decided um, that I was willing to make serious changes. And whatever it was, I just it was really a call to a higher power, a reach out to God saying, you know, what, what can I do? I just, I didn't want to go on the medication because, you know, with the medication, it says as a side effect, it could be death. And it just didn't seem like the answer for me. So I had tried a lot of things. I had tried a lot of like spiritual prayer, um, exercise. I had, you know, a pretty healthy American diet. And uh, there was a, a guy who I had met who gave me these books about raw food. And he was really nice. And he talked about raw food. And this was over a couple of years. And I wasn't interested in raw food. It had no appeal. <laughs> it just didn't sound appetizing. And so when I got to this point, I thought, you know, I wonder what these books have to say. And I didn't throw them away. I had them tucked into um, my kitchen in a, the bottom drawer. So I pulled them out. I started, you know, using some of the recipes and, um, I decided to just completely go off white sugar and white flour. Wow. And wow. That, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, if you had told me I was addicted to white sugar and white flour, I wouldn't have believed you. But you take it away from me for a month and I was climbing the walls. Yeah. And it was super intense, but I was deeply committed to my healing process. And I had to really go deep up 
looking at my attachments, attachments to food, attachments to a lot of different things, and uh, be willing to let go of my attachments uh, and completely surrender. Uh, not easy to do, and I'm sure for your audience, there's all, you know there's things maybe that they're working towards that they'd like to let go of, and uh, but you know Ben and Jerry coffee Heath bar crunch. <laughs> <laughs> that is not one of those things. Personally, <laughs> personal. I'll give up other stuff, but not that. Right? Totally. That's when we start bargaining with God. Please, God, please don't make this my journey. I know you put me here for certain callings, but please let it not be giving up Ben and Jerry's. Eventually, we exactly. all need to surrender to Ben and Jerry's. Exactly. I'm sorry. No, that is yeah. that is so courageous and incredible of you. And some people live their entire lives never heeding that call and never rising up to that challenge of what what can I let go of? What can I open to? more because it's only by creating the vacuum that we can fill that vacuum with better you know right. as you know as you right. teach at, through yoga and your healing food workshops and environmental workshops but wow that's so incredible I mean your story is I've heard many moms share that story how was that being a mother of four young girls to go through that and how did it affect your family well so after that month uh, I started feeling better. Oh, good. And uh, then I thought, you know, I'm almost there. I might as well just go 100% fresh whole foods. Nothing processed, uh, whole fresh foods. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I started munching on celery and cucumbers and reading and studying and uh, but feeling better. And so after about a month of experimenting and trying to figure it out my husband he started noticing what I was just my energy level you know he would come home from work and I didn't have a migraine he's like oh you know I kind of like this you know, <laughs> my wife's so, back yeah yeah it, truly. totally because uh, I wasn't I right. mean it's really hard if you're having migraines all the time you just don't feel like it I right know. I know exactly <laughs> so um yeah, we, after um, a month, he decided he was going to join me, and so the two of us started this adventure, and he started feeling a lot better. He was our, he was in great health, but he loved it, and so after three months of this adventure, we looked at each other, and we thought, oh my gosh, what are we feeding our kids? Yeah. Right, and it's standard American diet. And um, hot dogs and hamburgers and oh my gosh. pizza and you know when you're um, active and socially involved and um, our families we were going to birthday parties all the time and uh, it was intense amount of junk food yeah. that uh, we were raising our kids on and we realized that we could do better. And so we all went on a trip uh, to kind of remove them from that environment. And for two weeks, we went off white sugar and white flour as a family. Wow. And it was intense, uh, but it was also fun. It was bonding. And we came back to our home with just kind of a new protocol. And we started making new friends and setting up different social dynamics and to me these friendships were much deeper much more real and much more conscious of our how we're interacting with our planet yes. and ourselves and uh, it wasn't it's not just about food it's about consumer choices uh about you know what it's what our food what we're buying it in is it one use single use plastic that kind of thing Oh my God, you are so, you are my hero. Truly, you are my Malibu hero. You are speaking my language. This is my manifesto. And actually, I'd love to read a quote of yours about this new consciousness that you came to. Let me, tell me if you remember this one. No, at the end of the day, it's all about the kids, the role modeling, positive leadership for them. Role modeling healthy communication and leadership skills that give them skills not only for healthy family and community, but also the ability to lead our planet in a more positive direction. 
I think you are the master at these skills. You say you are not the master at these skills. You're just saying that because of your kids and your tribe, you feel that it was your duty, my dharma, to stand for this in our community, to attempt to activate the power of love as a political force, focusing on the issues in hopes to bring about meaningful conversations and proactive solutions and role modeling decorum and respectful communications, even when we are furious with each other. I mean, that, that to me, when I was yeah. looking you up, when my mom first told me that I had to meet you um, in Malibu when you were running for city council, and my parents are very big in the community um, into, like, researching who these people are. They're not just going to throw their vote away. And they actually really saluted you and, and championed you and what you were talking about, which was that very quote. So... I, I, yeah, I'd love to ask you a question based on that manifesto, which uh, is when you are furious, I'll speak for myself, when I am furious that other people's unconscious, unhealthy choices are affecting my life, my planet, my pets, the ocean that I love, how do you come at that with empathy and not furiousness? Right. That's such a great question. And it's so hard, and I've, I've really wrestled deeply with that. So, um, yeah, so let me share a little bit. Um, what I've really come to, Abby, is that, you know, I can't control what anybody does, but what I can control is what I do. And even with my kids, they're teenagers now, even t two of them are 20, and there's no way I can control. They're on their, you know, their own path. Um but I can, for, through my actions, I can be that role model. I can be that example. And that is all I can do. Uh, I think it's important that we all go deep within our hearts and we look at what do we stand for? Who are we? Are we real? Are we authentic? What are we living for? What's our purpose? What's our calling? And to really follow that. And, you know, for each listener, that is is uh, unique to them, uh, but I encourage each listener to, to go deep and look at what they stand for, and uh, by if we all do that and live according to what our value system is, that this world will be a better place. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, have your, have your daughters followed in your footsteps. They, they are adults, and you had to let go, and you can't control what they do. <laughs> But have they stayed healthy and respectful of themselves, others, and the planet from what yeah, you and Jay taught in your homes? You know, it's so fascinating, Abby. I would say uh, at times I'd be pulling my hair out and I would say an emphatic no. But if I <laughs> <laughs> the overall picture and compare them with, you know, the, the next kid on the block, uh, they're amazing. Yeah. They are amazing. Um, I think, you know, all teenagers rebel. Just instinctively, that's what they do. Uh, that's how they flee, they leave the nest, is they rebel against what their parents, you know, have set up. And they question. Uh, and I've, I have one daughter who went through a rebellious time for a couple of years, and now she is my best friend, and we make all of our Whole Foods meals together, and we love it. We're so happy doing it. It's, it's delightful. And then um, a couple other daughters who are on their own unique vegan vegetarian path, and mm -hmm. um, it's not as maybe clean as, as my path, but it's definitely more vegan more pure wow. than, than my path. And um, I think uh, what everyone's doing, though, which I hope my, is my deepest hope, is that they're following their intuition. They're, we all have a different path. And that they follow that is, um, yeah, hopefully what's going on. Oh, that is so beautiful. And it's so beautiful that you and Jay, your husband is Jay, correct? Jeff. Jeff, sorry, Jeff. You yeah, and yeah. Jeff model that for them. Yeah. And is Jeff still yeah. on the same wavelength and trajectory as you in terms of the health stuff? Or was it just a fad? Yeah, no, I would say 
in a lot of ways more so than I as just wow. as far as the, the whole vegan thing goes but as far as maybe because I just I'm not into buying a processed vegan food I I just I'm really into whole foods even more than that label of you know um putting it in a certain category right it's beyond vegan that's yeah. what I tell people people are yeah. my friends and and like you said when you made these changes in your heart and your life you attracted different friends and and made new friends I have done the same throughout my journey and I'm continuing to attract kindred spirits every day the healthier and more aware and authentic I get with me um, but I God, God bless my friends. I have friends who just kind of don't really understand my pure, my pure concepts here. And they'll want to have me over for dinner and they're like, what can I make? Um, pasta? Can I make you like quinoa pasta? And I'm like, you know what? If you just have, you know, cut up celery, cut up cucumbers, I'll be just fine. Or if I can bring my own uh, sprouted salad with my own homemade tahini dressing over, I'll be just fine. But it's like out they, they mean so well. And I'm like, I have to explain to them, I'm not just vegan. Like I won't eat pasta just because it has no meat in it. I'm like, I'm a nutritarian. I'm a purist. I'm like beyond vegan. It, there's no word for it. Well, there is. Nutritarian, purist. But yeah, people get my friends... God bless them, get so frustrated sometimes that they can't cook for me or offer me something at their houses because, you know, just vegan isn't really where I hold. Um, right. Well, you know, that's why I named the book um, A Malibu Mom's Manifesto on Fresh Whole Foods. Love that. Because to me, that's what it is. It's about just eating fresh whole foods, simple pure foods and the recipes are beautiful the pictures are beautiful your daughter didn't your daughter help you write it and she's in it they all they all, all had little um, recipes and quotes and they 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 have their two cents in there throughout for sure. well the reason i don't have the book to hold up right now is because i'm at my house in seattle june yay i was gonna say can you go. please hold up the book I left my copy, my autographed copy, at my parents' house in Malibu where I was looking through it and picking out recipes to make with my niece and nephew, my seven and four-year-old niece and nephew, who I am trying, please, successfully, <laughs> please, I am trying so hard to get them to eat more whole foods like the Malibu <laughs> Mom Manifesto prescribes. So yes. yes, this is June's beautiful, amazing, very charming book. Yeah. Full of quotes yes. and beautiful recipes by her and her daughters. Actually, really, really delicious. Great food combos. Um, your kids will love it. Adults will love it. And it was made with so much love. And is this the second edition? Yeah, it is. Oh, cool. You yeah. go, girl. Yeah. I got to get my copy back. If my parents are watching this video, mom, dad, could you please send me a package, a care package with June's book in it? I need well, it. Seattle you know, needs its copies. I, I have to say, I wrote it for two reasons. One is it's always helpful to uh, share it with others to make it more, or for me, to share with others, help me make it more my own. And the second reason was we had all these amazing recipes that we came up with. And when when I started on this path, I went to the library, I checked out all the books I could find, and I couldn't find anything that was geared towards families yeah. or something that a family could sit around and really enjoy a fresh whole foods meal together. Wow. So that's why I wrote this. Um, but I have to tell you, Abby, uh, truthfully, that's not why I'm doing this uh, podcast with you. Um, if someone buys the book, that's great. Um, but what matters is, I think more, I guess I want your audience to know that I'm really not selling anything, that um, I just, I'm here to be my authentic self with no strings attached. So. Oh my God. And that is why I adore you. And that is why June is such an inspiration to myself, my family, Everybody in our community. I, I mean, I wish you won for Malibu City Council. I wish you would run again. Why aren't you running again, actually? 
Well, you know, so much of what I set out to do was accomplished. And the biggest thing was most recently where um, Malibu went poison free. That was so Um, incredible. So incredible. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, Malibu made a stand not to use pesticides, not to use rodenticides, not to use chemical fertilizers that were toxic. That's huge. 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 Oh my God. So huge. And thank you for having a part in that and taking a stand for that. I mean, it is so, so important. And I tell my clients all the time, especially the ones who live in Malibu, in nature, I'm like, do you see these? I'm in Seattle. Do you see these evergreens? Do you see these beautiful birds chirping outside of your window? Do you see the Puget Sound? Do you see the Pacific Ocean in Malibu? Okay, what can we do to honor that? Because if you love your water so much, why are you eating a burger? If you love, you know, your your children and their their exactly. functioning brains and breathing lungs, why are you going to spray pesticides on the bluff where they play little, you know, softball? Yeah. Like yeah. it, it's, I mean, to me it's logic, but I've been in this game for 20 years, you know, I've been, well, longer, I've been an eco warrior myself since I can remember, but you know, to me it's logical, but yeah, what, I mean, I've, I asked you this before and you said just non-attachment, let go, everyone has their own thing, but I mean, I just want to ask you as a mother I look up to who's living this healthy lifestyle, what, how do you recommend to other parents raising healthy kids in this candy cane world? Oh my gosh. How do you navigate that outside of living on a commune? You know? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, Michael Pollan, is he the one who says we we have a national eating disorder? Probably. He says a few wise things. Don't know about the omnivore thing because I think we're herbivores. But yeah, he does say that. I think he does say that. And I have to um, also add in raising four girls, I do feel like uh, we have a national epidemic of eating disorders and I don't know if it's from the Instagram if it's you know they're very um, visual with pictures now early you know junior high school high school Um, thinness is so important um, because of that and what I've gathered is that these girls especially are Maybe having a cookie at night, waking up the next morning and saying, oh, I feel bloated. I'm not going to have breakfast. They skip breakfast. They're starving by like 3 o'clock. They overeat. They decide they're going to go on a diet tomorrow. And they start this cycle. And um, so back up to your question. Um, Tell me your question again. What can parents do? Like I feel like everywhere parents turn, their efforts are subverted. By, yeah. by this meat, dairy, sugar, body and image world. Like, what can yeah. they do to raise healthy kids in the midst of all that, that culture? Yeah. So there's that culture and then the culture that I just mentioned. And so my strategy, and I don't know that there's anything else that I could do or we could do, really, is to release them to their process. Emotionally, I cannot control them. I cannot control the world, (laughs) and I I really, it's healthy for everyone, for me, to emotionally, physically, mentally release them, allow them their process. I think life is so much about the experience, and when we go through the experience, that's how we learn, and so they will need to have these experiences, and, you know, it might be eating a lot of junk food um, so that they have that experience to learn whatever they need to learn or, you know, eating habits um, and, or how we're treating our environment and what they're buying, whether it's clothes. I, I mean, I do have a policy with my girls and they love to go shopping and I will buy them anything. It's on me when it's from a thrift store. And we have some high-end favorite thrift stores that I will take them anytime. So excited. Heck yes, sister. <laughs> it's on me. Otherwise, for their clothes, they pay half, right? Wow. So, um, so that's great. kind of a way that we dance with the world. Um, and then food-wise, you know, it's at home, I set the menu. 
uh, I make it, but they're welcome to make whatever they want. And um, my 14 year old now very often sits down to her own unique vegan. Maybe it's a little bit more processed, but it's her, it's what sh- her body wants. And I think it's so important to honor that and to honor her intuition and allow her the space to follow her intuition. Yes. Yeah. So that is just, those are such pearls of wisdom. It is my biggest nightmare in a way to hear that because I haven't had kids yet, but one of the reasons that I feel like I subconsciously haven't is because I am on some level, I'm not as sanguine as you are yet. I need to do a lot more meditating and yoga to get to where you is. That's you. I have this up here for you. Oh my gosh. I I mean like one of my biggest fears is having kids and like living this conscious, progressive, vegan, you know, holistic lifestyle of honoring the planet, honoring animals, honoring fellow humans. And then to have them just sneak off, like I did, by the way, when I was three in preschool at Malibu Methodist Preschool, and at, during nap time when all the other kids were sleeping, I went and stole all of the junk food out of the kids' lunches. At age three, I was doing that. I was an addict by three because my mom gave me healthy food. My mom was on the wavelength early on, organic, healthy. She didn't really know about non-GMO. Nobody did, for God's sake. But yeah, um, I was stealing junk food out of kids' lunches when I was three. So, you know, uh, your daughter, it has an issue, <laughs> but yeah. So like, that's it, my, it, you know, just to let your mom has had no control of that over that. It was not her fault. No, right. No, God bless and, her. And I think it's important for the listeners to know too, with their kids, whatever their kids do, whatever foods they choose, lifestyle that, it's not to their credit or to their blame. And Thank you. Same thing. Yes. With Let me off the kids. hook. Pre-birth. <laughs> Let me off the hook. Pre-life creating. Thank you, June. No, it's, it's really something that I, I stress about. I try not to stress, but it's really something I, I think about constantly. So it's good to know that you can live happily and healthfully in a community that's not necessarily a commune, even though a commune feels a lot safer to me. <laughs> I need to find my commune. But so that's why I started doing <sighs> my fresh whole foods classes. Yeah, right? please talk about that. Uh, I started doing them because I looked around at my community and I thought, you know, there's a great opportunity to share this. And uh, over a couple of years of especially my my daughter's friends, moms coming we have created community around uh, healthier eating together. Uh, It's really helpful, I think, when you're raising your kids to have some friends that have those shared values. And then my girls would go over to their house and eat their foods, maybe even with greater enthusiasm, just because it's different and because that's how teens are wired. Yes. I think that's how all humans are wired. I love experience. I love the, the, the grass is never greener. The grass is always green all around, but I love experiencing life from different perspectives. So whether it's a whole food plant-based meal at my house or a friend's house, I'll, I'll partake in it for sure. That's so amazing. And you're, you're so inspirational that way. It's like, you know what? Create it. You want be the change you want to see in the world. It's stop That's, looking outside of ourselves for, for the commune. Create the commune. You have a beautiful life where you are. Bloom where you're planted. I think that's such an important lesson. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for living that. Seriously, yeah. you're amazing. And then, well, actually, where can people find out about your, do you do public workshops or are they just for friends and family mostly? <sighs> Well, I have a website, and you can email me, and I take requests. I, I don't have any scheduled right now for this year. I'm really focusing on family, and it seems like my girls are needing me even more as teenagers right now. Mm-hmm. And just energetically, I'm I'm giving myself the space to go deep with my yoga practice. Uh, I, I love that I'm in better physical shape than I've ever been and my yoga practice um I I do have a gymnastics background but there's things that like 
the pose um, behind you, or even the one uh, in the darker pink of higher. The, uh, yes, that, that scorpion. Uh, that's one of my favorite poses, and I n was never able to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, all those poses I can do, uh, which is fun, but I couldn't do them last year, and I couldn't do them when I was 10 or wow. 15. I've never been able to do it in my life, and I'm 51 now. Oh, my God, you're and amazing. It, it's a party when, when I'm doing yoga, yoga now. I'm really it, it enjoying it. It is a party because you can even Google June Laux, J-U-N-E-L-O-U-K-S, and you can see her doing an amazing yoga routine with some really cute guy, some hot oh, guy. Yes. Wow, and really? you look incredible. I mean, I didn't know if you knew that was in the sci in cyberspace, but yes, you look incredible. And I was like, I can't believe this woman has four kids. I was literally watching that video saying, I cannot believe this woman had four kids. But no, it's true. I mean, you can, just like your body can bounce back and be in even better shape than you've ever been at age 51, young, the young age of 51, your mind, your soul, your heart can bounce back and be youthful and vibrant and healthy and whole again when you start living more consciously. I love the thrift shop. I never buy new clothes. Never. I live at thrift shops or the universe always provides. Like my friends know that that's how I roll and they'll just yes. be like, oh, I just cleaned out my closet. Want to come over? Yes, like it's that's where I got this shirt. Oh, this well, I mean, this is so old. Like, Wait. I don't even know. Cute. It's so, it's very, very fitting. It looks great on you. And you're a white, it's like um angelic, the white angelic color. But yeah, I, I don't even know where, this is from the 80s, obviously, v-neck, tight, bright, uh, hello. I wore it because blue for Malibu, blue ocean. But um, yeah, I mean, it's true. Like the universe knows what we need. And when we are in touch with that through eating high vibing foods, doing high vibing practices every day, like June does, I know you meditate too. Love, I love it. Meditation, yeah. yoga. Yeah. You know, you mentioned how we can maybe redesign ourselves, um, create new possibilities for ourselves. And one for me has been anxiety. Uh, and I, so I just want to mention that the yoga practice has really helped me connect with my breath to go deep, to, to relax. And then I take that on the mat, that practice into my everyday life. And that's another example of just how we can do better and redefine. And um, I think especially this year, I found more grounding in that area um, with deep gratitude. Oh, yeah. that's so amazing. I find it there, too. We're, we're kindred spirits. Yes. Yoga, meditation, high-vibing foods. And the other thing I want to mention before we skedaddle off the show is your incredible garden. I... Again, I had the honor of visiting June at her home, at her gorgeous home. And I know you're an architect. You went to Berkeley yeah. to for um, eco architecture, or what was your degree in? Well, I'm not technically an, an architect, although I've designed houses and uh, worked in, for architecture firms. Uh, and my degree was at UC Berkeley and in architecture. Right. Yeah. Was it green building, or did you come to that? Uh, I came to that. Okay. Yeah. Green but building. Berkeley is pretty, you know, advanced, and they they were talking about that when I graduated and was Yay. 87. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. So, yes, your house yeah. is a fairy tale. It's it's beautiful and amazing, and the garden is it's the best part. Is, well, I mean, all of it's the best part in my book because I love your house, but, yeah, the garden's absolutely incredible, and that's another way I feel that you're so vibrant and connected is that you're eating living foods every day. You go out and pick your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You pick yeah. your food. And, and yeah. as we both know, those little seeds are so intelligent, they pick up on what you need. They will grow according to what your DNA needs. So if you're yeah. lacking potassium, that little seed will grow with more potassium. That kale will grow with more potassium for your body. Your breath, your eyelashes, your sweat, your love, your vibes, going into that dirt, growing your own food. So, I mean, I just, you are truly one of my inspirations. I look so forward to, and I've already started to create the life that I want to live, which you're modeling for me. So it's homegrown, um, raising your family consciously from 
shopping at thrift shops that don't support sweatshops and over over consumerism to healthy whole foods to honoring the ecosystem our planet our community like i love that you're just so well rounded and so actually my my last question for you is how do you stay so balanced i mean all those things obviously but like what are some tips that you can give to other moms out there that might be struggling with anxiety raising four kids trying right. to figure it out how do right. you stay so balanced well i want to say balance is just a step away from the edge i mean wow. we're, right where i i think to i have pretty extreme values like the where i drew the line is pretty extreme extremely uh, awesome and uh and f yeah, finding that balance, uh, you the key has been in just like three balanced meals a day, and you know, two small snacks in between my meals. So I'm grounded in a way that I can take everything on. It's a fun and, and doing my morning practice. I like to take a couple hours, uh, and I do it on my own. Wow. Um, but then I can take all the all the punches. I can roll with it. Uh, so I do give you know I give myself that that time, and then hopefully when I'm outside of of that, I'm being my best self. That yeah. is so beautiful. <laughs> yep. Fill your own cup first and feed others from the overflow. That's for dang sure. What is so your practice is your morning practice is meditation and yoga. That's what you mean. Uh, I do a um, a series of the Surya Namaskar, right, uh, or Chandra Namaskar, right? I do 12 of those, oh, wow. and then I have 12 postures that I do, and uh, then I do my pranayama and meditation, and then always three minutes of at least, hopefully 20 minutes if I have the time, but I don't always have it, of the Shavasana, where you completely relax everything in your body completely surrender mentally turn everything off and just let go and release so yeah. wow i can't wait i have yoga in a few hours i'm gonna be thinking of you you're so amazing june i seriously thank you for existing thank you for coming to these realizations because you are a leader and by you living this walk walking this walk you're inspiring so many others to live a, a more virtuous life for the planet, for each other, for ourselves, for everybody, for our families. So are there are there three, maybe three Laux tips that you can give to our listeners and our viewers before we sign off? Like three, mm. top three June tips to staying healthy or towards getting healthier. Mm. Well, I think that, that that was it. Those three balanced meals a day. And, and the most important being have breakfast nourish yourself with fresh whole foods on yeah. a consistent basis because otherwise you know what happens is our body goes into starvation mode and our organs uh, get depleted of that um, glucose and then we start craving and overeating and we're not in balance mm -hmm. so when we're staying nourished which is hard to do like with my intense yoga practice to, to properly fuel that uh, so three meals a day with snacks. I'm such a mama laux. I'm all about, you're such a mama laux. We love mama bears. Well, I'm all about liquid breakfast for myself. I do liquids. Yes. I do liquids until 11, but I definitely do breakfast. Lemon yes. water with cayenne is my lemonade in the morning. Uh, oh wheatgrass shot, green juice, really, really filling. My green juice lasts me till 11. And if I'm hungry before that, I'll have my own homemade nut milk with stevia and pumpkin pie spice. And if I'm really hungry, some chia seeds. So it's chia seed porridge. But yes, yeah. definitely nourishing ourselves in the morning is key. I mean, with prana and with whole high vibing foods, I do it in liquid form, but you know, yeah. there are so many ways to the garden. So there are so many ways. And yeah, thank you so, so much. Wait, so that was one. That was one, oh, that's one. Three balanced okay. meals. Oh, I thought that was three. Oh, that's one. Two. Three balanced Eight. meals. Every morning, have some kind of practice. You know, not everybody has the ability to wake up early or do a two-hour practice, but 
take go outside take three minutes and ground connect with the earth breathe yes <laughs> <laughs> my emf harmonizing crystal there i'm trying go. to ground myself as you speak with this okay <laughs> yes exactly uh, some kind of practice have to sit down and have tea that helps to connect you into your body with who you are you know it could be rebounding to on the trampoline or just you know 10 minutes of being uh, aerobic or jumping in the pool that's what I did this morning and it's cold we're not heating it right now wow, and so it's like, ah! wow. And, um, I so love my lymph yeah <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> um and the third is, thanks to you, is laughter. Oh, that's and, right. And that's, that's the secret. Healing, healing through laughter is the best. Oh, yeah. June, you're so amazing. Three balanced meals of whole foods, uh, a morning practice, whatever it may be, so it can vary. One day it can be rebounding. One day it can be honing in on, on your intention for the day with a cup of tea. Okay. One day it can be yoga, just some kind of morning practice that grounds us. And yes. then laughter. Yes. Enjoyment. Yes. Enjoy this life. We yes. were put here for a reason. I know we yes. all have goals and missions, and we do, and they seem albatrossy sometimes, but my God, honey, you're never going to get out of this life alive. You better laugh. <laughs> Seriously, it's contagious. You're so amazing. Oh, my gosh. I want to thank my mom, my beautiful mom, for introducing me to you, June. I want to thank the universe for putting us together and – I just, I'm so grateful that you're a conscious mama. You're someone for me to look up to and reach out to when I have my little scrappers one day. <laughs> I need you. That See, I'm really doing this show selfishly because I need to document everything I can for when that day comes. I'm like, I need to watch the June video. I'm having anxiety about parenthood. Where's June? <laughs> this is my own little wind-up Buddha right here. You're just, you're so amazing. I really appreciate you so much, June. And if you want to check June out, June Laux, she's an amazing human, as you just saw. But even more amazing is her website and what she's done with her life. And you can find her at rompshis.com. W-W- no, Oh, new. oh, just no. kidding. Well, that is one of the websites, because I just looked it up this morning. But it's which one should I go to? It's a Malibu Moms Manifesto on. So can you spell the website and how we can get a hold of you? Yes. A Malibu Moms Manifesto on dot com. On. Yes. Yeah, on. Okay. A Malibu Moms Manifesto on dot com. I yeah. found a lot about you on rompshis.com. I don't know what that's doing yeah. up there. Yeah, it's up there. But yeah, you can just Google June Laux like I did and look up this incredible human. Maybe you're not even human. I feel like you're more of an angel. But yes, you can look up this angel by just Googling June Laux and you will find the Malibu Moms Manifesto. You will find her rompshis, scrumptious um, stuff. You will find her city council woman pros about uniting the community and living through whole foods and consciousness and love for the planet the other beings we share the planet with and ourselves so everybody look up june thank you so much for sharing this time with us june you're just so amazing i so appreciate you my pleasure thank you angel we'll see you again soon I, i'd love to have you back on for other little life by laux sometime Sounds soon great. Okay, honey, thank you so much. Have an amazing day and namaste. Namaste.